If I gave my ideal um, practitioner of the physical rather than the uh, allopathic medical approach, I would like to see a practitioner that combined the three major schools, physiotherapy, osteopathy and chiropractic. I would think in the long term there is no need for three separate disciplines. That may be a pipe dream, but if you look at it from the point of view of a funder, if you're funding a program for treatment of shoulders, for instance, and you went along and not, not knowing who was, uh, which practitioner was operating them, the layperson would not see a huge difference. So you could say, well, why should we fund three separate trainings when you're essentially doing the same thing? They don't fund three separate schools of medicine. Three different approaches to medicine. There's one approach to medicine. So I would think in the, in the future, uh, because there are so many similarities in using these disciplines, that they would merge. That's in the long term, way out in the future. But in the, sh in, in the short term, what would I want to see for physio? What would I see in the year 2013? I've given it no thought at all. So I should speculate. The big problem I see in uh, the area of physio physiotherapists I meet with, mainly in the private sector, is an area of funding. I'm appalled at the way they have allow themselves to have one person determining their income. It's something we never did in our practice. Uh, I spoke to, I've spoken to many over the years about that and uh, people just shrug their shoulders and say, well, that's the way it is, walk away. That I find sad. I don't, I don't know the answer to it. Uh, uh, I, I really don't. They have to cherish their independence. They have to maintain uh, their, their, their freedom and their uh, right to practice uh, as primary contact practitioners in cooperation with the, um, with the medical profession, that's important, and now the nursing profession is getting involved. You should always have that, and I think it's fragile. Uh, it's not universal worldwide. Uh, and uh, if you were to tie yourself to a sole funder, that funder, I'm sure, could just change the entry point, the gatekeeper as they call it, and then in a moment, in an order in council or whatever, your patient access could be limited. I think that would be disastrous. That could be prevented uh, uh, if physiotherapists move out of that mold and start to seek other areas of um, funding. Uh, other funders, um, DHBs and so on and so forth, have um, funding streams, have programs that need physiotherapy input in the general health sense, in the um, preventative medicine sense, in the occupational health sense as opposed to just treating a list of patients with usually very sometimes quite limited musculoskeletal problems that let's face it an awful lot of them are going to get better anyway and uh, you could argue don't justify the huge amount of input that often goes into them I've always felt that that's my osteopathic hat in that uh, if a physiotherapist uh, has a bunch of treatments to give a patient say 10-12 they might whiz through them in a couple of three weeks. An osteopath might say, well, I've got 12 sessions with you. I think I'll spread that over a year. I think we'll do a bit and then wait and see how you respond and then review it and come back and then, oh, yes, it's not quite right. Let's just do a little more. Perhaps you could stretch this or exercise that. and It would be a, it would be a much more holistic approach in terms of time as well as um, result. That's what I think uh, physiotherapists should look at. They should look at treating people over a longer period for uh, other reasons and, and having a bigger input into their general health over a longer period of their lifetime. I think they're finally with much more satisfactory. And uh, um, 
much less uh, monotonous. Mm-hmm.